Hello everyone, my name is Vincent Schwenk and I'm a 3D artist based in Germany. I recently started creating tutorials and therefore I am using the platform Patreon and in here I have already recorded 24 like hopefully interesting videos and tutorials and with this video I want to give you a chance to have a look at my style of teaching if you like what I'm doing and so you don't have to subscribe here you can first watch this video if you like it I'd be super happy if you join me and if you can then you can learn some uh, more detailed stuff just a quick note like this is me if you don't know me you can also check my Instagram and have a look what I'm usually doing um, nice. so let's directly get started I did a job with a friend of mine, Vitaly Grossman, like a couple of years ago, and it was for a German bank called Comdirect. And I want to teach you this shot. It's nothing too fancy, but I think it's a really good start for my uh, free tutorial. So let's directly hop into cinema and let's have a quick look what we all need. So I'm starting with the background. And with the background, I have a circle and it was probably quite small. Let's go for like two centimeters. And I'm using here a cloner, put the circle into the cloner. And I'm also already dragging the clone into my object. So everything is nice and organized here. So let's switch to grid array. And we need a small number here. Also you can See, we don't need tree and the Z, we only need X and Y. So let's first of all think about the format. I will post this as a Instagram post. So therefore I am going into my animation preset and about this preset you can learn at one of the videos I recorded in Patreon. So I click into the preset and I will record now a 1080 by 1350. So this is the best size for posting a post on Instagram. Perfect all frames, that's all set and nice. So then let's have a quick switch into our cameras. Go to the front and mm, actually I don't need that. Let's go back to here. And I already created a camera, which is a super long lens camera. I usually love long lens cameras, but as you can see in this shot, I was using a super wide angle shot because it's like a front, very frontal shot. And I wanted to emphasize the things coming out of the holes. So therefore I will switch my camera to a 25 millimeter camera and I will reset my camera by pressing piece R and so now I'm just angling to have a perfect composition and I think something like this works quite well. So then let's go back into the, our cloner and we will need um, a rectangle object and I'm again leaving my camera to be free to move around and you can see my rectangle object is way too big. So I think perhaps something like 80, well 80 was a really good guess and the height is a bit too much. Let's go for 120, let's say 90 and I think this could be a nice board. So this is like the background of the board with the holes. And now the only thing what we need to do is create a spline mask. And by the way, for the people who are, who are really beginners, I'm pressing shift C to get into this console and start to type. And this really helps to speed up your workflow. So then let's select both our objects, put them in the spline object. And I want to connect both of them at the, um, at which, what? That's why I guess, yes, but I think we have to. So I'm dragging the cloner into the connect object and I don't want to weld the objects. 
and now I have my spline mask and I'm using the x y um, axis along z and I'm subtracting b minus a and then I just need an extrude object and I'm selecting my spline mask put that into the extrude object and now we have our object and the really good part uh, about this setup is that we now can create caps on like all the objects which is quite nice which is also like a way better um, workflow than doing this with a boolean object so I'm going into my extrude object click into my caps and let's give them a cap of like 0.1 and yeah perhaps even a bit bigger like 0.2 centimeters so they're not too big but yeah nice cool and perhaps overall I want to increase the size of my um, rectangle so we have enough space actually let's make it even bigger I don't I just want to frame the camera so yeah like this that's quite nice and I am pressing NB to see my lines and I think if you are in an older version than R21 I guess your extrude setup is a bit different but um, keep in mind that we want to create a single object and we want to ha um, what was the um, caps yeah just keep in mind you won't have a single object so well that's the first thing let's have a look back in our job cool now we are creating the extrude so this good thing is we already have a cloner with the exact same thing so I'm just copying my cloner drag and drop it out of the extrude object and into the cloner I have the circle which is also already perfect so I just need to create another extrude object put the circle into the extrude object and increase the length of the object so let's have a quick look yep they are all now quite long and nice and they're to create a little bit more of detail we can shrink our radius a little bit let's go 0 0.9 0 0.95 0 0.95 perfect and I also want to create a cap so 0.1 a very small cap nice so that's the next thing then let's have another quick look at an animation here so first there comes the hit on the one object and then all the other objects are starting to move out so therefore I would say let's create a plane effector and in the plane effector I want to move them into the Z direction and let's eyeball of like what we like I don't want to extrude them too much to the outside so perhaps minus five centimeter could be right yep this looks nice and um, well the good thing again is the clone was the same because I want to change the amount of the holes because I really want to create a visual center like this one is exactly in the center and we have eight objects so I don't have a real center so therefore I'm going to select my count and I'll create nine and the same on the other one so see we are all now set up and all perfect again and well let's actually make them a little bit smaller so we are more visually the same as my reference so I'm decreasing the size of the circle to 1.55 nice and let's have a look Oh, actually I am all the time in the camera so let's just PSR reset the camera and we are now nice and that so have a look here that's cool so then what do we want to have with our plane effector we need a falloff and 
I will create a mm, let's go with a spherical fall off. Yep. Let's go with that and shrink the fall off. I am I left now the camera. And we are starting now with our main object here. This one should be moving out. And when the head comes, the other objects will start to move. But let's first create the hitting object, the cylinder, the cylinder. So let's have it orientated into Z. And let's say it's like four centimeters and two centimeters or even smaller three and 1.5 centimeters. And I am putting this also into my hierarchy with the objects and I'm giving my object a few more steps in the rotational segments, but I only am going to give it one height segment and I'm already giving the object a little radius from the bevel. So this looks nice and neat. Move it up so it's out of the frame. And let's have a quick look in our reference. So the object is falling from out of the frame into the inside. So we are moving this up, have a quick comparison with the camera. You can see we are now out of the frame and that's about it and I didn't save for now so I will give it a quick save and I'm gonna create a bonus tutorial for my patron guys as well so let's call that 12 bonus con direct great and S12, com direct, bonus, zero 01. Perfect. Always good to save because cinema sometimes crashes, as you probably know. Especially when you're working with dynamics. And that's what we're gonna start now. So I have the cylinder now, and I'm gonna right click on the simulation tag, and I'm giving him a rigid body. And this object here, my cloner object is gonna get a collider body. So simulation tag and he's gonna get a collider body. So now when I press play, nothing will happen because I have created, changed my startup values for my scene. I don't have any gravity here. And also if you want to create your own startup scene, you can watch my tutorial also on Patreon and have a look how that works. So we could crank up the value back to 1000, how it originally was, or we can just create our own gravity and I'll do that by pressing shift T, put a gra gravity in there and let's press play. And that's quite nice, but we forgot to give our extrude also a collider tag. So I'm selecting the background and I am going to simulation tags and I'm going to click collider bodies. Perfect. Have a quick play. Nice. So that's exactly what we want for now. Let's have a quick look. First and that looks great and actually I will move my plane effect to a little bit more up so we have later on a bit more time for all the coins to flip around then let's give it a quick save and now comes the trick what I did to create this effect of the like ripple kind of sort of out of one coin there comes many coins i'll copy my cylinder and i'm just gonna bake the objects cache and bake all so this is super quick and now i'm selecting my cylinder and i'm going actually you i guess you wouldn't you don't have to bake it you can just directly click here bake object and we also select PLA. And the cool thing is now we are creating an object and we already have a copy. So I guess I wouldn't even have, wouldn't even need to copy that. And we have our first object. So let's hide this for now. And cool, this is all moving and we have all the keyframes in here. So nothing is simulated and all is fixed, which is great. So I'm hiding this one and I'm going to back to my first cylinder. 
I'm clearing my cache and the things what I did then, I just changed some values. So we want the object to be the same until it hits this extrude object. And after that, I want a variation of everything. So first of all, let's easily manipulate some values. And I would say for this one, I am decreasing the friction. Let's make it even less and let's make it even more bouncy. So I have now my second object selected and I'm repeating the process as before. Select everything in all the frames and press. And this guy is kind of not doing so much and he's actually not really bouncy at all. He should. So I made a little cut here to speed up the tutorial. And what I did so far, I tilted my scene by 35 degrees. So um, right, the spin is tilted, but be careful, the gravity should not be tilted, so it's still pointing down. So my um, coin is more sliding on the object, as you can see here. And I just had added some effectors to my plane effectors, like some field falloffs, but that's another tutorial. and. You can see mostly they are just moving out when it hits the first yellow one. So overall we are now back at where we have been before and I just have to select the cylinder now and repeat the process from earlier. So I'm selecting the cylinder and I go into the bake and let me have a quick look if everything was done right. Yeah, well, you can see sometimes cinema is definitely a bit weird why the coin is behaving so strange down here. Um, if you don't like the iteration, you probably can just change a little bit of value and s recalculating and mostly it will then look good again. Some, let's say I'm changing everything from 25 to 29. I'm sure if I recalculate now, everything will definitely look different and probably or hopefully better. So just to have a quick look on that, let's play this guy again. And yeah, I think this works so far. So repeat the process, select your original cylinder. And I'm moving it a bit to the left and I click bake and move it a little bit to another position, bake, and move it to another position, and bake, and move it to another position, and bake, and move it to another position, and bake, and perhaps one more. Move it to another position and bake. Cool. So let's hide the one with the dynamics and let's have a look on how all our coins are moving. Well, this coin is moving really kind of weird. So I would say I delete this guy. This looks like some internal calculation problems. Let's see. But as I said, overall. Finding the best look for your um, project, especially with dynamic, means that you have to calculate something very often. So it's not, it's never or nearly never like, yeah, you have this in mind, set up all the values, let it play and looks good. You have to iterate and iterate, just change little values and yeah, try around till it looks nice. So I will create just one another copy because we deleted one and perhaps I will make this one even a bit more bouncy 35 selected function bake object cool so let's have a quick look and this guy is weird this guy is really weird he's just sitting there he doesn't have any keyframes so perhaps I accidentally deleted them so what we're fine with them and now to f 
finalized the project and the style we just need to say this is our hero coin and let's have a look where the hit is let's say the hit is here at frame 17 and also I will add this guy to a new layer and this is my hero layer and therefore I will switch my um, options into my layer color and until this frame I don't want to see any of the coins so I'm selecting them all and in the visibility I will say at this frame they will start to be visible and in the previous frame they are invisible and if I switch back to my camera now and press play we have the same effect as we created for the contract spot and you won't see the transition because of motion blur so thank you very much for watching and I would be super happy to see you on my Patreon channel to learn some more, some soft bodies, some, well, I don't know. I really had a lot of stuff already going on there. So enjoy and see you. Bye bye.